tattooed man arrested based on fearsome looks but there's more to the story people go on and on and on about not judging a book by its cover what this means is that you find inside is often much more pleasant and enlightening than a grubby ugly cover might belay what people never talk about when it comes to books and covers however is how those covers become so marred in the first place it's very rare that one can actually judge a book by its cover but sometimes very rarely a frightening outside can be a direct reflection of the dark soul within in the case of the man in this story the cover was the cause of all his problems but was that because of the man inside or society's prejudices 44 year old David Glasser and his friends 58 year old Edward Frampton and 47 year old Robert Chadwell were missing it had been 10 days police and friends had been searching for them since their disappearance to no avail Glasser was of particular interest to authorities because he was scheduled to testify in a case David Glasser was all set to testify against a man named Adam Lee Hall a member of the Hells Angels and career criminal in an assault case then he vanished and obviously the authorities suspected foul play their suspicions were found to be correct when the bodies of Glasser Frampton and Chadwell were discovered buried outside of Pittsfield Massachusetts 10 days after they vanished the police obviously had their fair share of culprits many of them known associates of Adam Lee Hall one of these friends a man who called himself Caio Viovis was of particular interest to them mostly due to the distinctive look he bore Caio Viovis was 34 years old a self-proclaimed vampire Satanist and grade a all-around weirdo Viovis had implants in his forehead that resembled horns green bones tattooed on his fingers that depict the skeleton beneath the skin and the 666 etched above his eyebrows yet his beliefs and appearance although jarring and unusual didn't make him a murderer not outright anyway still his association with Hall was enough to cause police to investigate him further and what they found wasn't exactly glowing Caio Viovis formerly of Augusta Maine had his name legally changed in 2008 previously Viovis was known as Roy Gutfinsky he and his then 16 year old girlfriend cut a teenager's back with a razor and kissed as they licked the blood the teen's injury required 32 stitches to close and Viovis ended up serving almost seven and a half years in prison for aggravated assault the act wasn't even the most jarring thing about him at the time either during the course of the assault trial Viovis called himself a Satan worshiper and a vampire with a thirst for blood it wasn't just the blood of others that he hankered for either he liked to hurt himself and drink his own blood already a danger but not yet disfigured Viovis would emerge from prison a more terrifying person than when he went in he was released on parole and got right back to it in 2006 he was charged with drug possession apparently he and a friend had held two strippers in a hotel room the girls dropped the kidnapping charges but the drugs were enough to violate his probation and send him back to Maine he got out again though and was now the number one suspect in a triple murder eventually police discovered that Viovis had two accomplices for the deed Adam Lee Hall the man to be tried and their friend David Chalou according to the evidence which was only discovered after they had pieced the dismembered victims back together the three men kidnapped killed and disposed of David Glasser Edward Frampton and Robert Chadwell with something like a machete the 37 year old Hall and 47 year old Chalou assisted Viovis by kidnapping the victims and shooting them to death their reasons were simple they needed to get rid of Glasser so he wouldn't testify against Hall obviously they didn't want to leave any witnesses around this time so they killed the other two with him just to be sure Viovis was charged with three counts of kidnapping and three counts of intimidation of a witness in addition to the murder charges unfortunately his specific looks while a proverbial slam dunk for prosecutors made jury bias a real issue it was going to be a real challenge to get an impartial group to present the case to once Caio Viovis walked into the courtroom the gruesome discoveries and overtly violent deaths of the three men shook the small town of Pittsfield Massachusetts Pittsfield is a town of only about 44,000 people and as such would be completely unusable as a place to hold the trial instead the trial was moved 50 miles away to Hampton County Superior Court in Springfield Massachusetts that way an impartial jury could be chosen obviously not too keen on going back to jail Caio Viovis pleaded not guilty on all three counts of murder kidnapping and witness intimidation however if he's convicted he'll be sentenced to a mandatory term of life in prison with no opportunity for parole the trial and Viovis's terrifying appearance garnered a good deal of media attention when it began the prosecution hit the ground running by bringing in a witness who could place the very distinctive Viovis at the scene 
The man, a Home Depot worker named William Gregory, had seen Viovis and another man come into a store looking to buy saws. The defense argued that the store was packed with customers on that August day, but of course, Viovis stood out. As if his appearance wasn't enough of a memory trigger, Viovis actually went up to Gregory, accompanied by his friend, Eric Fox, to ask him if he could direct him to the saws. They stopped by the wrench aisle, then the aisle with the hatchets and hammers. Fox then proceeded to pretend to chop the air with a hatchet and the two laughed before buying a wrench set and leaving. Despite the witness's testimony and the pretty solid proof that he was responsible, Viovis maintained his innocence. I've been in isolation three years now, he explained. I refuse to talk to the cops and I've turned down all the plea deals offered me from the beginning. He also has some theories as to why investigators were immediately drawn to him. Viovis alleges that the district attorney knows for a fact that he isn't the killer. He said that the DE even told his lawyer he knew I did not kill these men, but was searching for information about the disposal of the bodies. The plea deal the DA originally offered, conspiracy after the fact, which came with a seven-year sentence incidentally, was just not going to cut it. Like all his other plea deals, Caio Viovis turned it down. His statement in court was full of assurances that he hadn't done the deed, nor did he have any reason to kill the men. My hand was not in this. I will not let this man sell me my own hide at the price of my integrity. I would rather spend the rest of my life in prison rather than make that deal. As it happens, he just might. It was a week's worth of deliberation before the jury came to a decision. 37 hours in six days. In the end, Viovis's violent past and previous crimes, coupled with the evidence and testimony, were enough to convict him. Caio Viovis was found guilty of three counts of murder and would spend the rest of his life in prison. As for the Adam Lee Hall and David Chalou, the other two men charged in the killings, they were already convicted and sentenced as well. Viovis was not to go quietly, however, and as they delivered the verdict, he screamed at the jury saying, I'll see you in hell, every blank one of you. I'll see you all in hell. Please share this video with your friends below.